guys, my name is Miss Twisted and this is going to be three quick and easy ways to make cosplay horns. Between dragons, demons, elves, fawns, there's a lot of different cosplays out there that are going to involve making horns. As you can see from the display behind me, I have made quite a few of these before. So I thought I'd share with you guys my favorite methods for quick and easy cosplay horns in a variety of different ways so you guys can decide what works for you and maybe weigh up the pros and cons of each way. So I'm going to start off with one of my favorite methods which is using insulation foam. I use it to make these sort of weird sort of fleshy horns and my blitzer horns. I've used them a bunch more with older designs as well. Insulation foam board is sometimes also called insulation panels, insulation board, that sort of thing. It's this fully rigid foam that's quite stiff. It's super super light and it's very very easy to like dent or scratch or cut and sand which makes it super easy to manipulate for cosplay. Please do safety first guys if you are using this make sure you are cutting or sanding outside and wear a respirator as well. I don't want you guys breathing in any particles or fumes from this. So this method works great for big but simple shapes. I'm gonna draw the shape of my horns onto this insulation foam and I'm gonna add in some of these smaller shapes to go with my big horns. Now you can use a box cutter or Stanley knife to cut through this foam but I actually have this electric hot wire cutter which works wonderfully because it cuts through the foam like butter. It makes my job way easier. The first thing I'm going to do here is just cut out the rough shape using the outline that I've made and you can see that's come out nice and smooth here. If you're using a box cutter just make sure you change your blades or sharpen them regularly so that they're cutting through as smooth as you can. Now it's obviously looking a little boxy right now so I'm going to go over each corner and carve that off and then carve off the corners again, slowly whittling this down until it starts to resemble that horn shape. Remember you wanna take the most off towards the point to make that a bit smaller. If you are using a hot wire cutter like me, just make sure you are extremely careful to keep it away from your hands because trust me, it is not gonna be a fun time if you cut yourself with this thing. So treat it like you would a power tool and just remember safety first. So now that these are loosely resembling the horn shape that I'm after, I'm gonna start on the sandpaper. I'm using a relatively coarse one I think it's 150 and this stuff is pretty brittle so you don't need to press in too hard to get that shape start to come together I think I spent maybe 10 to 15 minutes on each horn to get them to this lovely smooth point it comes together really fast guys that's one of the reasons why this is one of my favorite methods to use because it's so quick if you want to you can use a finer grit to start to smooth this out even more but I'm not going to because most of that is going to be done by my layers of primer. Before we jump into the rest of these horns, guys, something that I should have from the start and did not do is think about how you want to attach these. So we're going to have the option of either sticking them onto your face or maybe mounting them onto a headband if you prefer. But think about that and make sure that where this bit is sort of matches the angle, like press it up against there and cut it accordingly so that it's gonna match that shape that you want it to be when it's attached to your face or your head. You can leave these fully smooth if you want to, but I'm gonna put in some details and for that I'm actually gonna use a wood burning tool. If you don't have one of these, you might be able to just press into it firmly with a pen just to dent the foam. For me, I'm just gonna create some of these weird little uh, veiny shapes going up the, the horns as I'm aiming for these to be a little bit creepy and flat. Fleshy. I'm going to use some offcuts of the insulation foam plus some toothpicks to basically hold these horns in place while I'm working. I'm going to take an extra step here with a heat gun and just run it lightly over the surface of each horn, which is just going to help smooth it out before I put on the primer layers. Please be careful if you're doing this too, not to put the heat too close to the horns because you can just melt through that foam and ruin your horns completely if it's too close. For priming this one, I'm using Mod Podge and I'm going to put on around four to five thin layers. You could also use wood glue. There's also Plastidip and Flexbond or Cosflex as some of the more popular priming options. You can absolutely use these as well, though you won't really need it to be too flexible as the horns are going to be rigid anyway. Just make sure you try and use multiple layers just to fully seal that and it'll help smooth out some of those edges as well. Once your primer is fully dry, because we're aiming for quick and easy today, I'm going to be using spray paint to paint these. I'm going to be using a flat grey primer over all of them. Then 
then a layer of gloss red. Once they are fully dry, I'm going to bring that inside to apply some acrylic. I've got this super dark blacky red color, which I'm going to paint in fine lines into all those little crevices. Then I've got a pale sort of pinky red, which I'm going to put on the tips and some of those raised areas between those veiny bits because I want these ones to look really fleshy and kind of creepy. So I'm aiming for that sort of meaty texture. But you can paint these ones up however you like, uh, preferably a less gross concept than mine. With my weird creepy horns all painted up and dry, I'm taking this outside and spraying on a layer of clear gloss top coat. This is just going to help seal in that paint, make it nice and durable and keep it nice and shiny on the surface. Once that's dry, I'm applying some liquid latex to the bottom of this. This is from Creolin, so it is made to go on your skin directly. Once this dries, it's basically going to seal in the bottom of that foam here. I mean that you can apply spirit gum to it, which you can then stick directly onto your face. If you have a latex allergy or want to put it on a headband instead of on your skin, I'll be showing how to do that a little bit later in this video. As you can see, as long as you're using enough spirit gum and letting it get nice and tacky before you stick it down you'd be surprised at how well they stick on and will not move until you want to take them off even my gigantic blitzo horns really held on and just did not move once they were stuck in place summarize guys this is a great method if you have a really large uh, simple shape that you want for your horns and it does come together quite quick. This is gonna be less ideal for something quite intricate, such as antlers. And of course, it does get a lot easier if you have access to electrical equipment like a heat gun or even those electric cutters. On to method number two, which is basically cardboard and hot glue. Both of these styles of horns are made with it. This one here, the antlers, I actually adapted from a method that I saw used by Jessica Negri, who is obviously incredible and needs no introduction in the cosplay world. If you want to check that out, the original, it is available on her TikTok. I will chuck her username in the description below. So I'm going to start off with a rough sketch of the design I want on a piece of paper, just to use as a guide as I make this. And of course, you'll need a ton of empty cardboard tubes, like from toilet paper rolls or paper towels. So cutting this first shape here to be the base, the second piece here, I'm actually going to cut down the middle and take out a bit of that cardboard so the cardboard tube will be a little tiny bit thinner. That way it's going to fit nice and easily into the previous piece. I'm going to glue the cylinder back together with some hot glue and then I'm going to use the hot glue to glue this big piece into this little piece here. If it doesn't fit perfectly just fill up that gap with hot glue anyway. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit messy. The next few shapes here I'm going to be snipping out the middle of them again to make those uh, tubes a bit thinner and you can see here I'm slowly making them into more of a cone shape so they're slightly smaller at one end. End. Some of these smaller cone shaped bits I'm going to glue on the outside as like branches of the antlers and just keep building up that shape until you're happy overall with the shape of these. Now isn't it even if you've got the the the. Now I hope you brought a lot of hot glue sticks because you are going to be using up a ton of it. You're going to run the hot glue gun up and down the length of your horn in lines to create a ton of this texture. This is going to look great when it's painted up and it also helps disguise a lot of those really messy seams you might have when you are constructing these. Here's how mine looks once it's all cooled down and now it's time to paint these up. Before I start painting these ones, I wanted to show you how I made this other set of horns also out of cardboard, which kind of uses like tiered circles of cardboard. So for this part, you want to just use some plain corrugated cardboard. This is the kind of cardboard that you might get a package delivered in. You can kind of see the lines of the cardboard, which I'm just going to call the grain, like the wood grain. And you want to measure out a bunch of strips that go against the grain here. Once you've got all of these cut out, you can use your fingers to sort of work and sort of curve around that cardboard. Those corrugated bits of the cardboard is going to help that form that more circular shape. And you get that liney texture coming up already. So we're going to glue one of these into a circle this is going to form the base of your horn. I'm just using hot glue here as I'm going to cover this one in hot glue at the end like the others. To form the next part of this horn you want to cut a very similar strip but just very slightly shorter than the first and then you're going to glue this into the first horn and I've put my in at a very slight angle so that after a little while of building up these tiers it's going to curve slightly. So you can keep building up your horn shape with more and more of these tubes just curving them as you glue them in and just making sure you're going smaller and smaller as you go. You can get some really massive intricate shapes with these but I'm keeping mine nice and simple and quick for you guys. At the very top you'll probably want to cut a bit of cardboard into more of like a cone shape to sort of create the point of the horn. I actually used a bit of one of the cardboard tubes from earlier to make this one just because it's nice and easy to make that thinner shape. This is already looking like a great shape for the horn so I'm going to be using my hot glue again to go around the length of the horn to create some texture except that I'm going to be going around the rings of the horn rather 
rather than up and down the length. I would recommend with this to try and use the hot glue to seal the top of each tier so that the cardboard is not creating some holes along the edge of the horns. And with both of these cardboard horn sets ready to go, I'm going to seal them in using a filler primer. Today I'm using Plastidip, but you could just use wood glue or Mod Podge or something similar. I do recommend using something to seal and prime these before you paint them up because it will help seal in that cardboard and make them last a lot longer. Back to focusing on my antlers and I'm going to spray these with a gloss brown paint just to get them a base color. Now once these are dry, I've got a lighter brown acrylic paint which I'm going to use a dry brushing to paint on. I'm using a big, big brush here and very, very quick strokes because I essentially want to catch just the top of those glue gun ridges to create some texture. It's also why I'm mostly brushing against the grain rather than along with it so it doesn't get too much into those gaps there. Sorry guys if the lighting is a little bit consistent here. I had to film a lot of this at night and then again the next morning so we kind of go a bit all over the place but you still get the gist. So I'm going to mount these horns on a headband. I've got a nice thick plastic one here which is going to be enough to hold the weight of these antlers and I'm going to use my trusty hot glue again for this one which I'm going to use on the outside and because the actual headband has some holes in it I can actually poke the hot glue gun nozzle through the holes to get some glue on the inside of these horns as well just for extra strength. With that hot glue gun set I'm just going to use some brown acrylic again to disguise these areas and I'm going to decorate these ones all up with some fake bits of leaves and flowers. This particular set I was aiming for like a classic sort of fawn look with those sort of summery feeling like a nature spirit hence why I decided to cover all of this with trees and flowers and leaves. This is a good option as well if you've got uh, quite a rough shape and you want to kind of disguise some of those areas that you don't like so much. But overall I'm really happy with this one. Let me just uh, duck back to showing you what I did with the ram's horns. These ones were super simple from here on out. I basically just sprayed them with a gold spray paint. I'm putting on a brown wash over them which is going to get into some of those cracks to create some more texture. Once these are dry like the others I'm going to spray them with a top coat to protect them and then I'm going to glue them onto a headband. So quick tip from the future guys I would not recommend using hot glue to attach horns to a metal headband which is why I'm holding this one in my hand while the other one is still attached back there. It just doesn't seem to grip quite as well. And set for next time what I'm probably going to try is getting some armature wire or even thread wrapping it around that headband and then basically like threading it through the horn with like a big hefty needle. Alternatively you could look at doing some super glues like some E6000 or something with a bit more grip to it that's specifically designed to work with metal. I forgot to summarize the main benefits with cardboard which are pretty self-explanatory. Cardboard is really easy to get hold of which makes it a super accessible option and really easy to use and hot glue guns are pretty common as well. The main thing to mention with these ones is they can actually have a surprising amount of weight once you start covering these in hot glue so just keep that in mind but anyway let's move on to round three so the last one I want to talk to you guys about is kind of like a mixed media thing but it basically boils down to armature wire and tin foil as the main driving force behind this one it's a really good option for more intricate shapes like these big curly horns so let's get into it so I've got a metal headband and just a ton of black armature wire here which I'm gonna just start wrapping around the headband and just start bending into the shape that I want which is definitely more of these like curvy shapes. You can see as I get to the end of this first spiral that I do double it back and wrap it against itself just because this is going to be the bit that is needing to be the strongest. And I'm just going to wrap a little bit more wire here to create the next prong of the antlers and just slowly work it into whatever shape you want. You can use this for more simple ones as well if you want but just go crazy to your heart's content until you've got the shape that you're after. This is how mine's looking so far and I have reinforced some of those joints with some hot glue as well. So this this is a nice little framework for our antlers and I'm going to be using here some tin foil or some aluminium foil whatever you want to call it which I folded up into some little strips and I'm just going to start wrapping that around each of these antlers and the aim here is just to thicken each of these up and create sort of the body of the frame. Tin foil is great for this because you can kind of just scrunch it into place and it just kind of holds its shape. It's great. Don't worry if it's not entirely smooth you just kind of want to create roughly the same thickness that you're after all the way through. I'm going to go on to use foam play from here but even uh, like 
like at the tin foil stage, there's a lot of different ways that you could start building up the shape of these antlers. I have actually used paper mache before to wrap those around rather than masking tape and just built that up until it's a nice smooth shape that I'm happy with. You can also even use plaster bandages, which actually sand really well once they're over there. So think about some different methods if you don't have foam clay readily available. All right, these are looking pretty good. I'm gonna start wrapping these into masking tape to sort of bulk out the shape a little bit more and just to create a bit of a surface on each of them. I actually ran out of masking tape while I was doing this and had to go to the store and get some more, hence why one of these has got like this weird blue section. Now, initially I thought I might be able to get away with just spray painting these ones as is without thickening up with something else, but it still looked a little bit too lumpy. So we scrapped that idea. I had some foam clay left over from a previous project, which is what I'm going to use today. Foam clay is really lightweight and has a lovely smooth texture. It's very easy to work with. So I'm covering up each of these and I'm going to be wetting my hands and then rubbing it over the foam clay to smooth it out a bit. I probably could have kept going with this one and made it even smoother still, but I'm going to be covering these horns with a fair bit of decoration, so I'm not too fussed about it today. I'm going to do a couple of layers of plaster dip just to seal these horns, and then I'm going to be spraying them over with a silver spray paint. Here's how they're looking so far, and I'm pretty happy with these. For decorating, I've got a bunch of different fake plants and flowers and a couple little silver chains. So I'm going to spray some of my plant bits silver to start with. I'm going to take some of these flowers and leaves and basically glue them directly onto the headband, particularly around the base. It does help hide some of those awkward or messy areas. To tie on some of the silver chain, I'm actually using a needle and thread and piercing through the antler at certain points to literally sew these on. And then I've cut out some strips of EVA foam here, which I'm just going to cover around each of these points to kind of create some rings. I've covered them in just a tiny little bit of silver paint just to make them a more dark silver so it fits in with the rest of the headpiece. And there you have it with this one, guys. I hope you liked this option as well. You can see I kind of use it for a softer sort of fey creature. Definitely a sort of fantasy princess vibe. Quick summary with this one. The main advantage is being able to build up those more intricate shapes, creating those smooth surfaces. The main downside is because you're doing so many different steps and layers, it can be more time consuming and a little bit fiddly, but it depends on what's going to work best for you. Today I've talked about my favorite methods for making horns, but there are tons of others that I haven't talked about today. 3D printing is a major one that's becoming more popular. That's how I made these purple ones over here. Another way is using EVA foam sheets and actually cutting out a pattern and putting them together to create a hollow horn that is quite large and strong as well. There's tons of other ways out there, guys. Have a look around and see what works for you. And don't be afraid to give some of them a go, even if you're not quite sure of yourself. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like or subscribe to my channel or comment below, that sort of thing. I'm obviously still pretty new to YouTube, so if you guys have got suggestions or feedback for me, I would love to hear it. Please check out some of my other videos as well. Also, I have Patreon, which is honestly the only way that I can really afford to be spending so much time onto these YouTube videos and all the other content that I make. So if you guys want to support me too, I will put a link in the description below. A special thank you to my top tier patrons, Artemis, Dakota, Lilac Witch, Residual Images, Tamara, Tim and Yuri. You guys are amazing. Thank you to all of my patrons. I literally could not do this without you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!